a 90-year-old daughter lying on a hospital bed with a 45-year-old father sitting next to her. This iconic scene from the movie Interstellar has left an indelible mark on the minds of almost everyone who has watched the movie. It is difficult to think of another film that has conveyed the concept of time dilation so powerfully and memorably. But here is the big question. Is the extreme time dilation shown in the movie scientifically possible? The answer is both yes and no. Interstellar is a movie that introduced a wide range of fascinating scientific concepts to the general audience. Concepts like black holes, wormholes, time dilation, the fifth dimension, and the Tesseract. The movie's scientific consultant was the renowned physicist Kip Thorne, who ensured that the script stayed largely grounded in real science. However, some parts of the movie inevitably diverged from reality, venturing into the realm of science fiction to serve the story. In this video, we will dive into the key scientific ideas presented in Interstellar and separate the real science from the fiction. Hi friends, welcome to another video from Science Simplified for All. Interstellar is undoubtedly one of the greatest science-themed movies of all time, and I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. This video is not meant to critique or find faults with the film. Like any movie, Interstellar also has its limitations when it comes to strictly following scientific concepts. Sometimes, for the sake of storytelling, certain deviations from pure science become necessary. In this video, we will take a closer look at some of the key scientific concepts presented in Interstellar and evaluate how much of it is grounded in real science and how much leans into the realm of science fiction. In this movie, they talk about a black hole called Gargantua and a planet orbiting it named Miller's Planet. Due to its proximity to the black hole, it is said that extreme time dilation occurs on Miller's planet. According to the movie, one hour on Miller's planet equals seven years on Earth. This is a crucial part of the storyline. However, in reality, such extreme time dilation is not practically possible. Time dilation is a concept introduced in Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. According to this theory, time can flow faster or slower for one person compared to another depending on the conditions. This is not just limited to clocks or devices that measure time. It affects our biological aging process as well. That is why the movie depicts a 90-year-old daughter and a 45-year-old father to emphasize the effects of time dilation. Time dilation can be of two types, velocity time dilation and gravitational time dilation. Interstellar mainly focuses on gravitational time dilation. This means time slows down for someone in a region with strong gravity. It's not something that occurs only near black holes. It also happens here on Earth, though on a much smaller scale. The strength of Earth's gravitational field is greatest at its surface. As a result, time flows slightly slower for us on the surface compared to higher altitudes. For example, a GPS navigation satellite orbits Earth at an altitude of around 20,000 kilometers, where Earth's gravitational field is much weaker. Because of this, time flows slightly faster on the satellite compared to us. Although this time difference is extremely small, it is measurable. For instance, while one day passes on Earth, one day and 45 microseconds pass on a GPS satellite. That means time on the satellite flows faster by 45 microseconds per day compared to time on Earth's surface due to gravitational time dilation alone. If we account for the velocity time dilation as well, there will be slight difference in the value. The 45 microsecond time difference might seem insignificant, but navigation systems like Google Maps depend on precise timing. If this time dilation were not accounted for, such systems would produce errors exceeding 10 kilometers in our location calculations every single day. This demonstrates that gravitational time dilation is a real phenomenon, not just a theoretical concept. The gravitational field of a black hole is extremely strong, and this makes the time difference near a black hole significantly greater. Therefore, the claim in the movie that time flows slower on Miller's planet, which orbits Gargantua compared to Earth, is indeed correct. 
However, the extreme time dilation depicted in the movie, where one hour on Miller's planet equals seven years on Earth, is not practically possible. Such extreme time dilation can only happen very close to a black hole's event horizon. However, having a planet orbit so close to a black hole comes with significant challenges. Every black hole has a minimum safe distance where an object can maintain a stable orbit. This is known as the innermost stable circular orbit, or ISCO. Beyond this point, no stable orbit is possible. For a Schwarzschild black hole, that is a non-rotating black hole, the ISCO is located at six times the Schwarzschild radius, which is the radius of the event horizon. Even if Miller's planet were orbiting at the ISCO of Gargantua, the time dilation would not be as extreme as shown in the movie. At most, one hour on Miller's planet would correspond to about one hour and six minutes on Earth. The dramatic time dilation of one hour equaling seven years was critical for the movie's plot. This led to a minor disagreement between director Christopher Nolan and the film's scientific consultant, Kip Thorne. Eventually, Kip Thorne suggested a theoretical explanation. Unlike a non-rotating black hole, a rotating black hole or Kerr black hole has an ISCO much closer to its event horizon. Gargantua is depicted as a rotating black hole. This rotation allows Miller's planet to orbit closer to the black hole, increasing the time dilation effect. However, for one hour on Miller's planet to equal seven years on Earth, the planet would need to orbit extremely close to Gargantua's event horizon. For this to be possible, Gargantua would need to spin at its maximum theoretical speed. While such a black hole is theoretically possible, it is highly unlikely to exist in the universe. Still, Kip Thorne relied on this theoretical possibility to justify the extreme time dilation shown in the movie. However, there is still another issue. A rotating black hole has an area around its event horizon called the ergosphere. Inside this region, all objects are forced to orbit the black hole at speeds close to the speed of light due to the intense frame dragging of space-time caused by the black hole's rotation. For the extreme time dilation described earlier to occur, Miller's planet would have to be located within Gargantua's ergosphere. In such a scenario, the planet itself would also be moving at extremely high speeds, close to the speed of light, as it orbits Gargantua. Landing a spacecraft on such a planet would be practically impossible due to the immense velocities involved. Moreover, being so close to a black hole would expose the planet to intense high-energy X-rays and other radiation emitted from the black hole's accretion disk. This would make it impossible for life to exist on the planet. These challenges are not addressed in the movie. This is why the extreme time dilation shown in Interstellar, caused by spending time on Miller's planet, is fascinating but not practically possible. Interestingly, in a later part of the movie, it is shown that the hero, Cooper, crosses the event horizon of Gargantua. This introduces another problem, infinite time dilation. At the event horizon, time slows down infinitely relative to a distant observer. Every microsecond spent at the event horizon by Cooper would correspond to an infinite number of years passing on Earth. However, this infinite time dilation is also not addressed in the movie, leaving a significant gap in the scientific consistency. Although the movie only mentions it a few times, the fifth dimension and the bulk beings referred to as they are crucial elements in the story. The concept of the fifth dimension is complex and challenging for us to comprehend fully. We are accustomed to living in four dimensions, three spatial dimensions, length, width and height, and time, the fourth dimension. The fifth dimension is something we cannot even imagine. If such an unknown, unexperienced dimension exists in the universe, it is difficult to envision how it might affect reality. To understand this, let us try an easier approach by imagining the condition of a being with one dimension less than ours. Consider a tiny insect walking on the surface of a sheet of paper. For simplicity, let us assume the insect perceives only two spatial dimensions because the paper has only length and width. In reality, the insect exists in three dimensions, but for the sake of this example, we will limit it to two. 
if we draw a circle around the insect on the paper, it may spend a long time searching for a way to escape. In the two-dimensional world of the paper, the drawn line appears to the insect as an impassable barrier. However, in the third dimension, the line is not a barrier at all. The insect could easily move over the line if it understood the concept of height. Interestingly, many insects, such as ants and ladybirds, actually exhibit similar behavior. While the reasons for this behavior might vary, for the sake of this example, we can imagine the insect perceiving the line as a true barrier in two dimensions. This helps illustrate how what seems like an obstacle in two dimensions is not a barrier when viewed from the third dimension. Now imagine placing a wooden block in front of the insect from above. The insect would struggle to understand where the block came from because it appeared from the third dimension, which is outside its perception. For the insect, the block seems to have materialized out of nowhere. It cannot comprehend the third dimension from which the block appeared. What I am trying to explain is that obstacles in a lower dimension might not be obstacles in a higher dimension. Similarly, events in the third dimension might appear magical to a being that perceives only two dimensions. Now, let us apply this concept to ourselves. We experience three spatial dimensions and one dimension of time, making up the four dimensions we understand. But imagine a being that exists in four spatial dimensions and one dimension of time, making it five-dimensional. Things that we perceive as obstacles in our three spatial dimensions might not be obstacles at all for such a being. Their actions in the fourth spatial dimension could appear as magic to us. Now, let us consider another scenario. Imagine an ant walking along the surface of an apple. If we focus only on the apple's surface, it can be treated as a two-dimensional space. For the ant to travel from one side of the apple to the other, it would need to walk a long distance around the apple's exterior. Now, imagine a worm inside the apple has created a tunnel connecting one side to the other. This tunnel exists in the third dimension beyond the two-dimensional surface the ant perceives. By passing through the tunnel, the ant can quickly reach the other side of the apple with minimal effort. However, from the ant's two-dimensional perspective, such a shortcut is inconceivable because the tunnel lies in a dimension it cannot comprehend. Similarly, two distant locations in our three-dimensional space can be connected through a wormhole existing in a fourth spatial dimension, allowing for easy traversal between the two points. Such a shortcut may be inconceivable for us because the wormhole lies in a dimension we cannot comprehend. Interestingly, the term wormhole itself is derived from this very analogy of a worm creating a tunnel through an apple. All these ideas may sound fascinating, but the real question is, do such extra dimensions actually exist? Today, there are theories that explore the possibility of extra dimensions. Examples include string theory, M-theory, and brain cosmology. These theories go beyond the four dimensions we know and incorporate higher dimensions into their frameworks. For instance, string theory and M-theory propose the existence of up to 11 dimensions. Among these, the concept of brain cosmology aligns most closely with the ideas presented in the movie. According to brain cosmology, our four-dimensional universe exists within a higher dimensional space called the bulk, which represents the fifth dimension. The beings referred to as they or bulk beings in the movie are entities that exist in this bulk. These bulk beings could theoretically create wormholes in the fifth dimension to connect two distant parts of our four-dimensional universe. Similarly, while a black hole may seem like an inescapable barrier within our four dimensions, incorporating the fifth dimension could provide a way to escape it. In the movie, this is how the bulk beings rescue Cooper from the black hole. From our four-dimensional universe, the actions of these bulk beings involving their fifth dimension may seem magical. This is the role of the bulk beings in the movie. In the movie, another fascinating concept related to the fifth dimension is how Cooper uses gravity to send data to his daughter. Essentially, he communicates with her through the fifth dimension using gravity. This idea has some scientific basis. The universe is thought to have four fundamental forces. 
the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, the electromagnetic force, and gravity. Among these, gravity is the weakest force we experience. This weakness is primarily because gravity is not confined to the three dimensions we perceive. As explained in earlier theories, gravity spreads into other dimensions, and this spread dilutes its strength, making it appear weaker than the other forces. This unique characteristic of gravity also makes it a potential tool for communication across higher dimensions. In the movie, Cooper leverages this property to communicate with his daughter through gravity in the fifth dimension. The bulk beings described in the movie are entirely science fiction, as you may have understood by now. However, the concept of the fifth dimension itself is not entirely fictional. It has some theoretical foundation. As mentioned earlier, certain theories go beyond the four known dimensions and incorporate higher dimensions into their frameworks. These theories are mathematically consistent, meaning they are not mere hypotheses but are built on robust mathematical models. However, mathematical consistency alone does not make these theories proven. Theories like string theory, M-theory and brain cosmology are often referred to as theories, but none of them are experimentally verified. Without practical or experimental evidence, they cannot be considered fully established theories. The main challenge lies in our current technological limitations. Testing these ideas would require particle colliders with energy levels far beyond those of the Large Hadron Collider. In fact, we might need accelerators much larger than anything currently feasible on Earth. As a result, it is unlikely these theories will be verified in the near future. Given this, the concept of the fifth dimension in the movie can be viewed as a calculated speculation based on unverified scientific ideas. Similarly, concepts like wormholes, the tesseract, and gravity-based communication related to the fifth dimension also fall into this speculative category. Physicist Kip Thorne, the scientific consultant for the movie, agreed to support the story with two key conditions. First, the movie must not contradict established scientific theories. Second, if any part of the movie ventures into speculation, it must still be grounded in currently available scientific ideas. In my opinion, the movie adhered to both these conditions. That said, as with any movie, certain deviations from pure science are necessary for the sake of storytelling. Nevertheless, the movie has successfully popularized many modern scientific concepts among the general audience, which is an incredible achievement. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it. For more videos like this, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and enable the bell icon. Thank you.